Stop right there, runner scum. Don't downvote just yet. Wait to the end of the video, then downvote. Also leave a comment. I'll probably ignore it, but that's the rules. Okay, tell you what, now you can downvote. <laughs>Okay, um, I've got my pads, I've got to make a story choice now. Right, so, story choices is as follows. I want to find out each of us for an involvement. This needs to, you know, only if I want this row flower for no matter the cost. Terminal Directive ranks up there with one of the single greatest experiences an Android network I've ever had. It brings the game back to its core set roots and it solves a lot of the issues I had with the game as it is in its current incarnation. I mean, not that the game isn't good, the game is still great, but here we go. Let's take Estelle Moon, which I'm playing here. So, two to rares, three to trash. I mean, that's just, that's just a nice solid card right there. So every time I install something, she gains a power counter, which is worth two credits and one card. And that's just amazing. I mean, it gives the power of engineering the future. But now it's available to all HB cards. So, okay, so while that built-in uh, mechanic with engineering the future is great, now I don't feel so bad when I'm playing a different form of HB. So, for example, if I was put into my custom botics, she's, she'll easily be used, and it provides what I've complained about um, HB not having, which is this nice click efficiency. It's what that Alexis Byroid should have been from the um, Order, no, not Order and Chaos, the, the, the first uh, course expansion for Shaper and HB. Uh, now, and again, Tone.tiff has many cards like this that just provide the game with a balanced sense of, well, a good, a good asset that I feel is fair and balanced. Now, the amount of cards, that card draw and money I get from this is great. It does, it does money me up, but again, I'm having to spend that money on the expensive ice. So I feel that, yes, HB can get its own, a lot of money now, but it does it in its own way. I mean, before you used to have to rely on um, MBN and Jinteki to get all this money. Um, for example, Jinteki would get this money by uh, celebrity gifting, and it would just burst up really quickly. Uh, and, and MBN could run with very little to no credits. 
and had sweeps week was just an amazing card but now i feel Estelle Moon HB has its own theme because I felt that the clearance cards, while technically more efficient, were not efficient enough to warrant its boost. And and I do respect the design space, but I feel like for the first time that HB now has cards that match the efficiency that was promised. Um, I did argue with Damon about the lack of efficiency that I felt that HB had. That while it did was supposed to be this this click compression faction, I don't feel that the compression was enough. That that a card from another faction that was dedicated to one single purpose wasn't as equally or sometimes even more efficient. Let's go back to the example of Sweeps Week, which is one credit and you could gain like like four credits. And again, it only costs one to play, and you can get up to four credits, even more sometimes from nothing. And in some cases against uh, players like Andromeda, you're just getting insane amounts of money for one credit. And I don't feel that HB cards match that efficiency until until Terminal Directive, which I do feel they do now. And here's me using it now. See, each one of those represents like two credits and a card. And I believe I got um, five cards and ten credits there. So they're, each one of those red ones is worth five credits. So it's um, ten credits and five cards. And, I, and again, I could do it during my turn spending no clicks. It was, I mean, that is exactly the kind of compression that I feel the HP needed. And again, it's not on an identity. It's on something that can be used by any HP player. And if you want to splash out a faction, there's a reason why you'd want to. Again, there's a reason to spend influence. And I think I'm raving about it just now. Um, you know, I think, okay, I might even, might even like turn the comments on for that. So, but there we go. Another card I want to rave about is a Marion campaign. I love that card. That card makes so much sense. I mean, before other campaigns like Adonis and Eve you used to have to sink so much money into them to get any kind of return. I mean, to be fair, if you could keep them going, you could make some a fair bit of money, but it was often pretty hard to do. And especially now nowadays with um, how heavy, how easy trashing is to do. So, I mean, my campaign just makes it makes a fair assumption. Okay, if I'm trash when I'm installed. I mean, sure, you lose your investment, but when you res it, you just you pay nothing. You, you you spend your money, and then you get your money back, so you don't feel like you lost anything. But the runner can still has the option to trash it, and then when they do trash it, it goes back into your deck, so it's not completely wasted. I mean, like, unlike the other campaigns, which just go away. It's just it's just so good. It makes it makes the makes the HP much more reliable, which I feel that that this corporation needs to be. It needs to be reliable because it's off, it's recycling stuff. They do recycle stuff, they play stuff in the archives. And so the idea that this stuff auto recycles, that's it. I mean, that's so click efficient. It's just so, it's just another form of efficiency, which I feel that HP needs. It's a great design. And it's such a simple, such a simple thing. I, mean, I can't believe I never thought of it. It's just so great. Okay, the last card I'm going to go on about right now is um, the actual identity of Cedar itself. What it does is very fundamental, is it makes losing clicks matter. And I think that that was an issue I had. When, when I lose a click or two a turn, it didn't really matter that much because of the amount that they could, they could still run and they would still be making a profit off those runs. And if they can do that, then the fundamental part of the game is kind of broken because... Um, Running is no longer a risk. And because of that and the irrelevant size, it was a problem. But not in this game. In this town director game, running is a risk. And it's something you have to build up towards. And here, um, Blown Cover hits a piece of ice, Tapestry, and he loses a click. And so when he loses a click, I get to put a card on top of R&D. And this is during a medium run. He has medium out. So I am going to put some cards on top of R&D and Tapestry also lets me put a card from HQ on top of R&D and I put a snare on top as well. So also I get to draw a card as well so I could have put um if I'd done this in the right order I could have put a card on from HQ so a part card from archives like a hedge fund on top and then draw it and then I could have used the click, click loss ability to put a card back on top of R&D like, like the snare for example I could have really damaged him and messed him up. 
Unfortunately, I did not have enough money to trigger the snare, so I did not do it this time. But again, if he runs that through that again, it's something I have the option to do. And the click loss matters. Because if he gets a tag during that from a snare, I could scorch him. And there is a scorch in this deck. So again, it matters. The click loss actually mattered, which is so nice and refreshing. Okay, these are the questions that Michael Boggs kindly answered for me. Uh, first, asked him about the conditional conditional nature. I used a specific card in this case, successful demonstration. He responds that conditional card requirements are sometimes very finicky to design. There has to be a really great reward for such cards, and if they're too good, then the cards are always played. Concerning successful demonstration specifically, a gain of five credits is a large boost. Just as restructure, like restructure, especially when the corp only needs, especially when only two credits are needed by the corporation. However, yeah, with the success rates of runners nowadays, that can be quite tricky. That being said, when cards with conditional natures have the support, they can be pretty good. And he recommends the use of black level clearance, which is an excellent choice. And again, that's a terminal directive card that makes. You know, it actually stops runs. It actually has the opportunity to stop runs. And I think that's good because, again, in the last time on Directive game that I showed you there, there was only one single unsuccessful run. And that was out of desperation. And again, out of six games, if there's only one unsuccessful run, then I think there's an issue of runs and runs being too efficient and too easy to perform. Um... Next, I ask about Levy Lab Access and same old thing, because I think they lead to a, a game where it's far too easy to play cards from the heap, and it's far too easy just to reuse cards that have been trashed, and they're never really gone. And he says, sure, something that could be that could be tested to make um, Levy Lab Access and um, same old thing one of each but again he doesn't feel it's a problem yet um if he if he did feel it's a problem he put on the most wanted list but again think about account cipher and how many times that gets played think about ice destruction cards i mean the consistency and the use of them is just is just too much at times i think if you got rid of these cards you could build a viable deck that is like consistent enough where you wouldn't need them and again, I think Town Directive has proved that with how consistent that criminal deck was, even though it had pretty much no recursion in it. Um, Sitha, I asked if it could be FAQ to um, reduce the the strength of uh, printed strength of ice to zero, so that would ignore all stat boosts performed on ice. So you know, if you got like plus one boost on ice, it would still be one, even though the and like only the printed strength would be zero and i think that would be a much better um design a much more flexible and friendly design there but again I mean, you'd have a reason for ice boosts that would actually matter he's heard it discussed before you think the mwl has uh, sorted it out enough so that's good there pardon me um Self-regulating cards, he didn't understand it. Basically, um, if you take a card like Faust, which just so efficiently break gets through ice, I mean, the, the cost is, and I do say cost, the cost is to discard the card. Discard the cards, discard cards. And again, as I've stated before, with cards like um, Same Old Thing and Levy Lab Access, this is not really a cost. It's just... You actually want these cards in your heap because you can get them out so easy nowadays. So again, I'm thinking that if the cards, for example, if Faust said, okay, to increase strength, you have to ditch cards, but to break subroutines, you have to remove cards from the heap. That'd be a very interesting design because then you'd be, you'd be um, increasing strength to discard cards just so you could cut that. And, and imagine how much more sense Faust would make. Yeah, you can get through the ice, but how long will it last for before you run out of cards? I mean, that's the kind of design space that I'm thinking about. Uh, 
and I finally go into the conditional nature of Wayland and HB. But in this one, I specifically focus on Wayland. So Scorched Earth needs tags, but again, MBN is the one that has all the tag. And then you've got Hunter Seeker with um, needing to steal an agenda. They all require something to happen. I mean, isn't there a way to make this more synergistic like MBN? I mean, MBN has a lot of tag-based punishment that requires tags, but MBN's delivering these tags anyway. So it all feeds into each other. It's all great, but the Wayland has no such mechanic. It's just, yeah. I mean, if you had stuff that works off Advanceable Ice, like uh, like commercialization, again, it's not as efficient, but as synergistic, but it makes sense. Yeah, and you've got um, the card, uh, Dedication Ceremony, and that one that fast advances for two credits a pop. I mean, could those kind of play with each other there, but there's, it's not that strong. I mean, I mean okay, okay, now we're getting cards like... Uh, um, the one that takes all advancements and moves it to one place. Okay, that's so so it's getting better. No doubt it's all getting better. It's all after time of directions, all getting better. And again, the design is as excellent as I've, I've read before. And I just want to thank um, my, Michael Boggs and David Stone and NFG in general for just being so great and answering my silly questions and putting up with it. It's just, it's just, it's such so nice. It's just so good. I want to say thank you.